Welcome to the Lighter Side of the Dark Side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio. Also, Apple Stitcher, Spotify, Deezer, TuneIn, CastBox, all of those places. Wherever you're listening to us, wherever you're watching us, thank you for joining us. It's the Dark Mark Show. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. Flip this around. Hi, I'm Hannah Bach, everybody's favorite heavy metal vegan DJ. <laughs> there you are. Yes. There I am. I gave my own intro tonight. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, and you are everybody's uh, favorite heavy metal vegan DJ. I hope so. And we got quite a show, and uh, I'd start from the, with an apology. Yes. Well, I, not to you, but to... Our guest. our guest, Beth Lapidus. <laughs> Everybody loves Beth Lapidus, and uh, she's been kind enough to be on our show, impart her wisdom. Now, uh, do you prefer the queen of alternative comedy, the goddess of alternative comedy, the godmother? I mean, any, would, is there I, a preferred term? I don't have a preferred term. Um, whatever you prefer. I like all. Yeah, I, I think. I like them all. Yeah, the inventor, the... Creator. I creator. Like creator is a word I love. Okay, the creator of alternative but comedy. But I didn't create alternative comedy. Beth Lapidus. Myself. Okay, well, we'll see who did create it. Creatrix. It's a group yeah. effort. Group no, effort. I, it was, yes. And so, see, your show, Uncabaret, has been uh, going for 25 years. Still going strong. I was certainly a champion. Yes. Well, well you're de- you, I mean, you're definitely, a, definitely an influence. And we're going to talk about... The state of comedy. I know this is Andy Kindler's usual thing, but I, I, we, we had such a brief time last time you were here. All right. There were so many questions I wanted to ask. So you. many questions. So many questions, and uh, so many uncertainties. See, she can sing too. You can sing, and you can dress. Oh, yeah, always style, style maven. Oh, you look good. You guys are just too very, nice. very goth today. <laughs> there, am I like, very goth? Very yeah, goth, all are. black. You're wearing fishnets. It's a whole thing. I like it. Mm-hmm. That's my usual, just summer black. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and by the way, since uh, if you if you love Beth Lapidus and Uncabaret and, and alternative comedy, you should go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Once again, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS because. There's a motherload. There's so many uncabaret shows there are, aren't there, yeah. that are on there, and you can get those. You can get one for free. Get one for free. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean they got. I mean all. And the, if you're on Amazon Prime, you can get the. Uh, there's four episodes. You right. can get for free. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I will check that out. But at the Audible trial, you get a free book or comedy album or comedy thing. Also, two Audible originals. Yes. Um, um, Kate McKinnon has a has an Audible original that oh. she wrote with her sister. Where it's like a twisted fairy tale. I, I dig that. They have Alien 3. The movie sucked. But William Gibson, the cyberpunk writer, wrote a script. And they got Michael Bean and Lance, Lance Henriksen and people to act that out in a movie. You can get both of those free and an uncabaret. Ooh, also, Meryl Marco has one on there. Or Meryl Marco, or whoever you want. The history, of, history of Women. I think Julie Sweeney has uh, something on there. Uh, there's all sorts. Of, I mean, yeah, there's go, all sorts of comedy albums. Audible, listen. Yes, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS so that you get it for free and then get paid a little bit. So let me. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. So if you're going to do it, ah, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. <laughs> the secret is out. Hannah's going to tell us about our other sponsor and one more thing she's working on. Then we're going to talk about comedy. Yeah, um, one of our sponsors is Doomies Home Cooking. They're located on Fountain Vine here in Hollywood. They have one in Culver City, mm-hmm. Toronto, Canada. 1253 Vine Street. 1253 Vine Street, excuse me. <laughs> right on the corner of Fountain and Vine, right by the M Bar where Uncabaret used to be. Oh, yeah. And they do. They have a Next Mex, which has um, amazing Mexican vegan food. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also were voted best nachos last year in LA, and they are vegan. Yes. And then you can also, you know, get your grub on with a vegan Big Mac. Right. Shrimp poor boy, po boy, which shrimp is your boy. favorite. V- they have vegan shrimp po boys. Wow. Yeah. Vegan chicken parmesan, vegan. Pulled pork, it's amazing. And what's it called? Doomy's Home Cooking. And may I add, they are open to 3 a.m. on the weekend. So after you have some junk munchies after the bar, go is on it a, down. Is it a $1 sign, $2 signs, or $3 sign situation? It's a... Uh... Probably two dollars sign. $2 yeah, no, yeah. that's okay. not bad. They're, they're kind $2 of they, sign, it's yeah. kind of it's it's kind of it's kind of a yeah. yeah. It's enough to take home too, and they yeah. have sure. amazing like vegan carrot mm. cake, yeah. and the staff is fantastic. Also, so I'm going to segue into try something. Try yeah. <laughs> it's not I, as cheap as Denny's, but it's not as poisonous well, either. You're not going to go to Denny's. <laughs> yeah. Denny's so is crap. yeah. No, but it's also I'm going to segue into this Saturday. We have the Animal Rights March in downtown LA, and it will be safe. The streets will be blocked off by the LAPD. It's a peaceful march. There will be vendors 
Um, so come on down. It starts at 1030 and it's going to run till I believe around three or four. PM. Okay. Well, not, so. not, now you tell me about that. I might join you there I, myself. Yeah. Myself, I'm not going to be there because I'm sensitive to the sun. But um, if you have any questions, sure. please go to the Animal Rights March on Instagram or you can follow me and I will direct you to right. there. Right. Go to Hale Hannah Bach on Instagram yeah. or Facebook or Twitter. Yes. Please come out and support us. And if you show up early, there's going to be some swag bags. Oh wow! Okay, and tell them the Dark March shows aren't you. Mm -hmm. You're you're all for animal rights, I'm sure. You well, asking me who's yeah. going to be against who is it? Um, what, 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 there's no answer to that. You'd be surprised. Really? There's always somebody that's of opposite of everything. You know, like people don't like vegans, and it's like you know, I don't care what people eat. Who cares? Well, people. I mean, how are you going to tell people that they shouldn't take it? We can't get into that. Let's not get into that. We all let's agree. Get in, let's get in, let's get into. Let's get into. You are the you. You made comedy cool. You are the godmother, the uh, the the uh, the okay. the inventor of alternative godmother, comedy. Godmother, sure. Let's the uh, yes. What, sure. Uh, what did I say? There's so many uh, things there I can say. So many things. So many things. If you look up alternative comedy, Bethel Peters is going to be is it had better be listed because you started on cabaret and yes. you started a different kind of comedy. Yes. Which is alternative comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is uh, not misogynistic, not uh, Unhomophobic, unxenophobic, unmisogynistic. It came from performing at an alternative space one night and so mm -hmm. the women were laughing too hard and I said, and you know, you know how funny your stuff is. And they were just like, I was like, when was the last time you laughed? They said, we don't laugh. We're women, we're artists, and we're lesbians. Yes. And if we go to a comedy club, they make fun of us. Right. And I said, I'll make you a show. It'll be unhomophobic, unxenophobic, unmisogynist, uncabaret. It was a download. Right. So that's how it happened. Well, and then it was an adventure. Then I didn't exactly know where it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to find it from there. It didn't come from me. You know, I had my own frustrations in the comedy clubs. I... You know, standing behind Andrew Dice Clay, waiting to go on stage, mm -hmm. hating him, hating the audience for loving him, hating myself for hating, not wanting to operate out of hate. There has to be a better way. What's right. the better way? You walk around with that question, that question. I don't have an answer, but what is the better way? Then you're in the thing with the. You know, it's a process. It's right. all process. Now, was there was there ever a time you think alternative became mainstream? Because I do. Well, when when would you say? I would say probably the early two thousands. What what's the moment? Um, the moment uh, I think, um, probably when podcasts started hitting. You know, here's the thing. Comedy nerd culture really started booming. That's not all of alternative comedy. Right. Nerd culture did become somewhat alter. That nerd culture mm -hmm. did become somewhat mainstream. Right. But that is not the same thing. In full right. as alternative comedy, but also a improv comedy store. They started putting on alternative nights. Yes, but it's still yes, yes. There was a mainstreaming, but right. there is still. I mean, it's hard for me to to walk into. What I try to do is create an environment with more freedom than you can right. have at a mainstream comedy club. Sure, part of that is the audience. I mean, the audience is a big part of it, what the audience is coming to expect. But, I mean, I've performed at the Comedy Store and the Improv in the last couple of years, and it is different. Yeah. It's 100% different. It's still not where I would like it to be. It's not what I would design for mm -hmm. my most, you know, it's not what I try to do with Uncab, but I certainly feel like there's an enormous shift. On the other hand, you know, I will look at a lineup and it's still a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. The environment is still not great for women. Right. There's still not as much, you know, LGBTQ that I would like to see. Um, there's still not as much, you know, Hannah Gatsby brought this up a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's a fight. It's sort of what I've been, it was good to hear her say it because it's what I've been trying, you know, the going past the punchline. There's still... So what's alternative? I mean, are you talking about including material about, you know, drugs? Sure, that's it there. Are you talking about releasing comedians from the seven-second laugh meter? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. So there's only so deep that you can go in a situation where an audience has to be fed a little sardine every right. seven seconds. Mm -hmm. That rhythm is very demanding and can, you can only go so far because the setup can only be so deep. Right. And then the punchline is there and then are we going 
past that is there room for story and in a lot of cases it is a lot better yeah so i don't want to say that there isn't i mean there's not a it's not a black or white yes or no i see a shift and when look when when we started alternative you know when uncabaret began um and it, you know yes i worked very hard and so yes me but us i mean there was a group mm -hmm. that without this group it's not you know it's a sure. wee situation at that time, you know, there were already two strands of comedies. There's always been two strands. There's a shticky strand, and then there's this deeper strand. At the mm -hmm. time of the Catskills, there's also, you know, Lenny Bruce. Bruce and yeah. even Lenny Bruce himself is shticky and deep. You yeah. know, so, you know, there's these two different sort of per, just giant forces in stand up poopy fart jokes and you know and a deeper trying to understand life and what it means and you think there's, there's room for both in an act often they do not exist side by side in an okay. act uh occasionally i mean lenny bruce did a lenny, lot of dick jokes lenny bruce you know. richard fryer people like that yeah i mean a lot of comedians who are great comedians you yeah. know do end up doing a lot of you know, blue material, right? And that's part of life. So I'm not the no judgment, really. But it, it, you know, it's like I look at a lot of comedians who, and I won't name names, but there are like a lot of great comedians that are working now. And I'll dip in and I'll see something and I'll just go, ah, oh, it's it's lazy. And but also a lot of times I just don't like those people. I mean, <laughs> there's some things that seem really honest, and I'm like, I just don't like you. I mean, it is funny. But there's a le but there is like also a level of being a human, right? That I'm just like. Well, speaking of human, here's here comes a hey. quite a human. I'm sorry, Hi. Erica's here. Uh, this is uh, Eric Irvin, Amazon Barge. Eve. Barge. Hi, uh, hi, Eric. Hi. How are you? Hi. And uh, she came in. We were. Uh, have a seat. You look lovely as always. Oh, wait, wait, your hand oh, is gonna I give just you a got hug. Checked out afterwards. Oh my god, I got yeah. sunburned everywhere. It's not so many hugs. Oh, honey. Anyways, look at, look, at, look, at, look at that oh, red. Ouch! Wow. Ouch! Your dress is gorgeous. Thank you. Look at you dressing up for us. Yeah. And uh, 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 test the mic. Yes. Yes. Ooh, there you there go. There it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Erica, Hi. Beth, Hi. Beth, Hi. Erica. Hi. I love this moisturizer. Yeah, that's, I just realized, I, oh God, I'm, Ow. oh my God, I'm so ragged. You know so what you actually have to do when you get, as soon as you get home, is vinegar. Vinegar is what you need for a sunburn. Apple right. cider vinegar. Really? Yeah. You would think that would burn or sting? I'm telling you, it's just the, it's, a, it's, it has to do with the alkalinity. Oh wow, okay. Now, now we, we learned, once again, we learned something from Beth. Mm -hmm. I'm a walking. Yeah, you could you could teach uh, comedy classes and sunburn classes. Sure. Yeah, uh, but uh, I was going to ask you what you thought of uh, Hannah's Gatsby's uh, special because that became such a uh, talking point last year. Yeah, I don't want to do a review of that. You know, but uh, but it was it was important, and you know, there. Uh, I I like that it was out there. I mean, yeah. you know, do you it think was there's... a little over for me, a little overly polished. I like my comp for my taste. Yeah, I, I, you know, the thing is, I, I, I heard people say it's the greatest thing ever, or it stinks, and it's. I will say neither of those things. Exactly, it's, it, it was in the middle. I thought it was yeah, good. You know, I'm also not big on opinions. I've had so many opinions that have changed. I don't like to come unless I'm just saying Ugh, I love that thing purely and simply. Right. I, I would have in order to sit and really talk. I'd have to watch it three more times. Right. In order to have. I'll tell you who's special I loved. Okay. I loved that Wanda Sykes special. That oh, okay. That made me laugh so hard. I, is, is, that, is that on Netflix? On uh, Netflix. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah. I love Wanda Sykes. She does so, it's political, it's personal, it's, she's, her timing is just so great. I just adore her. She's, she's, she's the best, one of the best. Yes. There's no question. I gotta, it's I, a I, great special. I gotta check that out. So, uh, speaking of Netflix, do you think there's too many people getting Netflix specials? Uh, no, I mean, it's just ebb and flow, you know, um, I think there's, you know, two, I don't want to watch, I mean, is there too many? I can't lose, I don't know, I don't know, well, uh, but I mean, there's, there's a, not, I don't know, I've never asked myself that question, I don't have an opinion about that. Because there's a lot of, I mean, I'm just saying from the rank and file comics that, that, uh, that I come across, I hear a lot of, uh, and I see a lot of on social media especially, you know, how did this guy get a special? How did this, this woman get a special? There's too many specials. They're giving 
specials out like candy well, you and people know what? don't the earn people them. who are complaining about those specials would not think they were giving having too many specials if they had a special right they're just cranky that they don't have a special right jealous. they're jealous so, exactly I mean, I, mean, I want your special. I want your special. I want what you have. <laughs> right. Why can't that be mine? Oh, yeah. I want it. Uh, I don't know. I, You know, it's Until they just, blame you for stealing it. They're just very... Um, Social justice worry. I don't think there's too many. Intersectional <laughs> flatulence of oppression explaining. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What uh, you know, I think the business of I think the only thing that's a problem with it is I think you know the overarching to lock in material 